first we'll start with a poem called Falling. When he told me about the guillemots and the kittiwakes, how their numbers are falling, how he used to watch them roost on cliffs ever since he was a child, he lifted his hands to his eyes and cried. I heard the room swell with the ache and crack of calling birds, wings in flight beating walls to dust, his whole house falling into the dean so I could see what it is that's left when everything you love is lost. Everything you love is lost. Decline of seabirds, that was a poem written by a friend of mine. For 15 hours, sometimes. <laughs> I will give you just two verses and then I will fade it gently out. <laughs> this is the story of a young man in 1969, a long time ago. As a young man on board a boat heading towards Iceland. 1969. <laughs> 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 He has gone all night doing this. <laughs> he has married after a while. So there we were. Tim Dalling, uh, Accordionis Caledonianus, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so he learned that. But there was always, Tim used to like birds as well. Malcolm knew a lot about birds. But Tim didn't know that much about birds. But he loved watching them fly around. And he liked to draw birds as well. He collected a little scrapbook. And he'd never actually seen a sheer water. But then when he heard Malcolm talking about it, he got quite excited. <laughs> And then he ended up going to this island where lots of sheer waters live. <laughs> anyway, here you have Homo sapiens looking at this bird here. Now, one thing that he learns, not from art school, but from reading the dandy and the beano, is that when somebody looks at something, it's a dotted line. Now, I don't know why this is. Maybe it's something to do with physics and light refraction. I'm not quite sure. But if somebody looks at something, it's a dotted line. Okay, so there you go. So we have Homo sapiens, and he looks at this bud, and he names it Puffinus Puffinus, the Manx Shearwater. Now, not to be confused with puffins, which we've already mentioned. They're Arctica protectiva. <laughs> I don't know much about birds, but I know some of the Latin names, you know what I mean? And deep under the water, she sees something, something white and shifting. And she's down, and bubbles, and there's feet, and there's wings flapping, and she's down, fast! Fast she goes, like a fish, and a sharp beak grab a little white squid. And she bobs up, throws her head back out. She swallows it. She's put on weight. And she's got a voice. And there's a voice which is coming from somewhere over there. She can't quite see it. She can't touch it, but it's a strong voice, and the voice is saying, time to go, time to go, you've got to go now. And like all petrels, to take off, she has to run, and she starts running, running across the water, opens her window, <laughs> updraft of the waves, floating up, and then, down the other side and those stiff wings flapping flapping and she's going and if you look down you would see a lone bird out in the south atlantic ocean and all there is is miles and miles of dark sea there we go and then it goes kururui kururui and that's the bird song there, they go all together. Kururui, kururui. Fantastic. So we put that together like this, it goes. Hindala horogi, ho! Hindala la, hindala horogi. Kururui, kururui. Hindala horogi, ho! Hindala la. And that's a chorus, all right? So that's the whole chorus. And I'll do some verses. That's the rehearsal over with. Sorry about that. If you haven't quite got it, just make it up. Just <laughs> a quick point of translation is that the uh, Hindala Horogi, Ho Hindalala, is Gaelic for uh, Wop Boba Loo Bop A Lot Bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it actually uh, makes any particular sense. I think it's just kind of rhythmic singing. I'm about to. What's a 
was a guy like speaking up, we'll find this. Let's go. Let's stop for the chorus. So one, two, three. Ha! Well done, give yourselves a